Keith Miller is uh, is uh, the associate provost for graduate education at the University of Denver. Um, he's a, a professor in the Department of Chemistry. He's an analytic chemist. All things which I think disqualify him from being at the Playposio. Um, he also happens to be my boss. So let me tell you a little story. Um, Keith and I work on, you know, uh, I, I'm the executive director of online at the University of Denver. Again, something that I think disqualifies me from talking about play. But one day Keith walks by my office and he starts talking to me about pirates. Um, now you have to understand that the only link I can think of why Keith is talking about pirates is he's a Naval Academy grad. So he's been spent some time on the sea and I, I don't know, maybe took a class on pirates. But what it turned out is he says he's doing a freshman seminar on the theme of pirates. And I got really interested in this. And I asked, uh, so, so Keith's in the middle of teaching this class now. I asked him to come to the, the Playposium and to talk to us for a simple reason. And, and I'm kidding that he's disqualified from talking about play, but I, I recognize as a bit of an, uh, like an anthropologist of, of play that there are professors that are out there that are playing that don't necessarily even identify as a professor at play, but yet they find how play opens up their creativity, inspires their students. And so I kind of wanted to just bring Keith in as a really authentic example of someone who teaches in an area that maybe doesn't naturally seem to lend itself to play analytic chemistry um, and kind of hear his story. So Keith, if I haven't completely discouraged you from ever agreeing to this in the first place, Maybe you could talk a little bit about the genesis of, of your teaching of a class about pirates. Sure, uh, thank you, David, and um, for this opportunity. So really, the, the, just uh, some structure around the course that I'm teaching, um, it's, it's, it's really wide open. It's a first year seminar for all of our incoming students that come to the University of Denver. And, the, the main there's two main principles really is is really to to serve as an academic advisor the entire year uh, and the second one is really to engage those students immediately into the intellectual life of the academy of of the university um and so we had a banner i mean how i got here is we had a banner a, a lot of students and so we were oversubscribed at, for undergraduates and my boss or ex, actually my former boss um was just under the gun a little bit, and I said, "Sure, I can, I can, I can recalibrate um, something that I've done before uh, many years ago for the first year se seminar." And it was based on movies. It was really the science around climate change, how it was how it was done in movies and books, and also forensic science. Um, but COVID and everything else is stressful, right? And so, <laughs> one of the things I said, "I'll do it," but I just have to have fun. I have to have fun um, and find something that. Um, that I can be excited about doing, but also make a connection. Uh, and then the other half, I guess, that is really important to how I got to this point was, I've done some outreach uh, through some of my work in chemistry around science outreach. And so some of the capstone courses we've done before is, is how can you apply your chemistry knowledge to the public in public library settings, where you can create engaging activities for parents and, and caregivers and their children in public spaces. And so they're playing, right? They're trying to understand. And so I just kind of mushed those two together. And uh, David's right, I'm an, I'm an old sailor. I'm sporting the beard and the gray hair. So that's kind of fitting into the whole role of being a pirate-like figure. Um, and so I just picked pirates. And so instead of doing films on climate change, I started looking at, you know, maybe some texts, you know, Treasure Island is a, is a classic, but also, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. And so that's kind of where I am. And so we, that's the genesis of it. And the idea was, how can we look at these uh, films, maybe some books, and then look at science themes that might stem themes around them and see if the students could play for a while and then come out and develop activities for um, middle school or actually no elementary school students. So before we get to the actual class, I want you to think back over the, the summer um, when the first time you you mentioned pirates to so talk about your own kind of journey from this like, well, here's a clever idea to what, as far as we can tell in the office has become an obsession with pirates. So yeah, it's, it's kind of an obsession. And I think that my wife is going to disown me right now because I have so many pirate books and I ordered a pirate play set uh, recently from Amazon. Um, I think the, the obsession came is, 
and I don't want to say this facetiously, I really think that pirate is an incredible topic for interdisciplinary studies and actually the study of liberal arts. Because what I found myself, um, once I began to find out some more fact from fiction, I began to, to discover how complicated pirates are and their history and what a pirate is and the span of time that piracy has existed. So um, I've just been going down and, and, and myself, what I liked about it and the framework I'm trying to have at the seminar is this is truly a lifelong learning. You can find something that is really interdisciplinary and then begin to understand all the interconnections. So you, as you know, David, is that I really began to delve into history. I'm not a historian, I'm a chemist, um, but then I found out all sorts of colonial history, pre-colonial history of the United States. Um, I'm an ex-Navy guy, or a veteran, so I found out that many of the beginnings of the second Navy in the United States was based upon some of the Barbary pirate activity um, in the Mediterranean. And so I, it, it just has truly become um, an obsession, but I think the part that I really like about it is that I'm excited every day going into class and now the students are excited and they're kind of picking up and going in different directions. Hey, can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, did, did you pick pirates because you thought this will keep me interested in this class I need to teach? Or did you pick pirates because you thought kids like pirates, popular culture is cool with pirates? I mean, how, how, how why pirates? Why not something else? I, well, well, so to be truthful, I mean, I, um, there was a, a line dealing in academics and students who are challenged. One of my favorite lines was from one of the Pirates of the Caribbean um, movies. And it was, you know, it's, it's about, you know, the problem is not the problem. The problem is your attitude about the problem, right? And so that was kind of the connection as I really liked that. But then it, it is playful, right? I, I wanted to draw the connection between how you can um, look at some things as complicated, but still enjoy it. And, and to me, pirates are, pirates are complex. Um, people don't understand them completely. But then I, I saw the same connection with, with STEM. And to be truly honest, um, I thought that I could engage the students in something playful and fun um, more than I did with climate change. I mean, I, I, as a geek, I'm an analytical chemist that has environmental applications. It was part of my early research. Um, I thought that engaging students around climate change, I mean, they'd all be excited about it, but it turns out that they really weren't. I mean, okay, they, they, they came eager about the environment, but then talking about the impacts of carbon dioxide and water. Um, so I thought in showing those type of doomsday movies that, that didn't, it was only kind of one dimensional or two dimensional. This provided just, just a wealth of different opportunities for the individual students. So I think it was partially fun but also having done this before, seeing where I could just latch on to more materials was kind of, was my motivation, if that makes sense. Sure, so before we get into the class, and I'm super interested to hear you talk about how the class is going and what you're doing, um, did, did the, the, po the topic of pirates surprise you? Did you get into this as a maybe a little bit of like a, this will be fun and then? It, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that I was, in myself, I had a very, very shallow understanding. I mean, I knew that, you know, from, from my, obviously my background, um, being deployed in the Persian Gulf where we had Somali pilots, pirates we had to worry about in the Persian Gulf, the, the modern day pirates, but still there seems to be this, this disconnect between modern day piracy and the romantic piracy of the golden age. So, um, I mean, I, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question very well, but I, I think that was the exciting part of it, but I didn't really know all these other you know, tangled webs that I could go down. The complexity in my mind wasn't there. And, and to find out there's this whole scholarly field of pirate historians or, or piratologists, I guess. I'm not sure what they call themselves, but it's quite amazing. And, and they're from all walks of life. And so even though I'm an analytical chemist, um, there's historians, there's uh, literary uh, scholars, they're all engaged in this interdisciplinary space. Um, there's there's economics, you know, so there's economics involved in piracy, both old, you know, and then modern day piracy. So there's, it's a wide diversity of, of intellectual capital that's kind of being brought into this space. So that was my surprise, to be honest, that I could, that I could do, uh, do some searches and find a whole book on the economics of, of piracy um, was, was pretty cool. And I think that was, you know, what I was, and thank you for talking about that is, 
you know, from my perspective, when you said you're going to teach a class about pirates, I thought, hey, that's that's great. That's really in my wheelhouse of doing things fun. What even surprised me is that it really seemed to enliven your own interest in the topic in a way that was very exciting. So even before you started your class, I thought this is going to be a great class because this guy is really excited about pirates. And in fact, I can speak for other folks in the office. I think everyone enjoys hearing Keith talk about pirates because it is so multidimensional. And it's it's actually, it's not your discipline, but it's become an area of scholarship or at least scholarly interest for you. So let's turn the corner and then talk about, okay, so you've got what, 15, 20 freshmen walk into a seminar room. What happens next? So the first thing really was, um, I, interestingly enough, I started out with the pirate theme. So I, I came in with a, a blank syllabus almost. I mean, I, I had the frontal stuff. These are your learning objectives. But as far as grading, I, it was all kind of blank. And I, and I said, so we're going to treat this like pirates would on a, on a, on a cruise. or on a, on, So we need to come up with a set of articles that will then define how we're going to credit to this. And I and there were some general ideas. You know, you had to have some participation amount. Um, and I gave them some guidelines, independent project, independent presentation that goes in depth into your area. And so that was kind of the, the first day was their, them deciding upon their articles of, of how they would like to be evaluated. And, and I kind of, to be, to be fair, I have leeway in this class, right? It's, there is no, this is no prerequisite this, for any other class on campus. So it's kind of a one and done. Um, that, that was the, the first day. Uh, and then, then I just had them, uh, very typical, I also was in the honors program for many years at University of Denver. So I, I treat it as a seminar. So I had some guiding questions about, you know, what they thought, what, what, how they would classify what a pirate was, um, some things that come to mind. And, and so some activities that they might begin to think about. Um, and so that was really the first day, just, just having them talk about some of their, their um, ideas around what they thought they knew about pirates and, and the, their limitations. One of the things that was interesting that I didn't expect um, was they wanted to do a class project that would involve, I kind of showed them about a pirates, I guess there's a pirate festival here in North, Northern Denver, right during Discoveries Week. And I just happened to show them a link during Discoveries Week and they immediately jumped on this whole idea that they wanted to build a life-size cardboard boat out of cardboard and duct tape and put me in it. And that was gonna be part of their final grade is that they wanted that to be part of their final grade. And so we kind of negotiated that. And so they have to figure out how to build this. And so that's been part of it then is this major class project of, of testing the different designs for this cardboard boat that I have to test in our major swimming pool here by the end of the quarter. I told them if I get wet, their grade is gonna, their grade is gonna be uh, dinged a little bit. Um, so they're working on those prototypes now. Um, so that was kind of the first part was really for, for me to have them play. And you know, I, they all wanna watch movies. I said, so I can't do this too much because you know, I, we're here to, to play, but you just can't sit and watch movies. So uh, the, the second major session was I just wanted them to sit back and watch a movie and be inspired. And their, their whole assignment was to go through and look to see what the, the common science themes were and uh, related to um, one, of the, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. And from that, they gave me all their ideas. And then basically the next week after that, it was, a, a, it was playtime. And so what I wanted them to do was experience play. So there was, there was you know, Alka-Seltzer rockets. There were um, different types of flotation, making little boats. And what I wanted them to play, to understand, to enjoy, and then they're taking a step back with these smaller projects to then now look at the next generation science standards to try to make the connection. So how can we make this playfulness that you were having and now connect it back to a next generation science standards? for an elementary school audience and begin to now craft an activity now that you've had some fun. So that's kind of the, the, the beginnings of the first few weeks. And so to tell me a little bit, about, like, how are the students doing? Are they enjoying this? Are they confused? Are they learning? I think that, I mean, I think a lot, I think it's 50-50, right? I mean, the challenge we have is facial expression because this is all in person. Um, and so we're all having to wear masks. So usually you could gauge the individual by their facial expressions. And when they're all wearing masks, it's, it's kind of hard to see that. 
Um, so when I go outside and I can, I, I have a PowerPoint. So I have some of the films that they did on some of their tiny prototypes, not their full, not their bigger ones. Um, so they, they seem to be having fun, definitely playing outside. So we have a lot of water features on the campus. And so one of their things was to figure out to, to just play with some small boats that they could use in outreach when they're talking about Archimedes principles and displacement, things like that. So that I gave them time to do that, to see if sails would work with different types of materials. They made those and we just, so when they're outside and you can see their expressions, they seem to really be enjoying themselves. And, you know, it's hard to tell, right? They're college students, their first year. Um, they're really engaged, but some of them aren't yet, right? But some of them are really excited about their special project. So I, I have them digging down into an area of piracy that they want to know more about. And a lot of them are really engaged at trying to learn very specifics. Um, right, yeah, but again, it's like, who knows what the other half is right now? I, I could tell you from they're engaged in classroom activities, but there's always one or two, but I would say no different than any other year. And we're on quarters, so we're roughly halfway through the quarter, so there's there's time. Um, so you told me a funny story. Uh, you'd watch Pirates of the Caribbean 1 as a class as to kind of set some, and then one of the students went off and what watched all the rest of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, and you so were joking to me that he had done extra homework. Yeah, that was a funny story, and I, and I, and I, because they were talking about the first few weeks, there wasn't a lot of homework, so they were really surprised. And this particular student came from a, a pretty intensive high school, I think. Um, said, yeah, there hasn't been a lot of homework yet, but they did volunteer saying, yeah, but I binge watched all the parts of the Caribbean to help me in the class. So um, that's not exactly, I mean, it's it's fun that they, um, they, they brought that up. Um, it shows that they're really engaged in the topic. And the same student, was talking to me earlier this week saying that she's really far in her special presentation too. So I think that it's, it's I would say of the, the 17 that I have right now, 50% of them are, are really engaged in their, their in-depth projects because they're talking to me about the excitement of it. And um, so it's gonna, be, it's gonna be interesting, I'll have to say, because it's, it's always hard to tell with this class and there's so many different layers with the pandemic and the mask and, um, yeah. So, I mean, I mean, what's your reflection on just, so this is, you know, at the heart of it, it's a science education class. I mean, if we just stripped it all down, what's your sense of what the role of play in science is? Are you, is this a, a fun class that they'll forget about as they move forwards or abandon the sciences, or is there a role for play in scientific I, discovery? Well, I mean, I think going back to my back, the background that I'm kind of pulling of multiple different experiences together I've had as a faculty member at University of Denver is that one of the books that's really inspired me early on for my outreach was a book called Design Make Play. And I can actually put that in the, in the chat, but it was around just having kids work um, and just tactfully, and, you know, working with Play-Doh actually was one of them. It's called Squishy Circuits. Um, it's just a wonderful activity. And so that was, that's really inspired me um, to think, why can't we do that with college students? Um, I, I think, but to answer your question more directly, well, I guess to, to, be, to be clear, to finish up on that, that, that idea, that's kind of the structure that I wanted to have the course is have them play for a while and to be engaged with it and then hopefully understand the science behind it. Um, I have engineers, I have business majors, I have a sociology major, and then I have chemistry and biochemistry majors. So it's from all walks of life, right? As far as academic interest. Some are very comfortable with the scientific principles, other are afraid of math, right? And so the whole concept of displacement and density and stability is, is pretty challenging for, like stability would be definitely challenging for many individuals. Um, but I don't, I, I hope what they take away from it is just the love of, of not being afraid to mess around um, and to ask questions based upon an observation that they're, you know, to do something. Um, I, I always say that everyone's a scientist, right? Um, an experimentalist. And so as long as you can, you know, ask questions and make observations and then try to interpret your observations, that's the scientist to me, an experimentalist. So that's, I hope that that's what they'll come out of the course with. Absolutely. So I have a few more questions for you, but I want to invite, um, you know, uh, folks in the audience, if you've got specific questions you'd like to ask, um, 
I, I'd love to hear them and have you bring on stage and ask them. Um, so, so the question I really have for you now is, is you know, you, you had this idea, it got you all inspired, you brought it to these students, it's certainly at some level engaged the students in material that maybe they might not have been as engaged with. Um, as a, as a teacher, what is what lessons are you taking away that you'll carry forward maybe when you're not actually teaching a pirate class? Um, that's a great question. Um, well, I think I always try to do this in different ways. So my capstone class in chemistry, I try to engage them with something that's relevant. Uh, I think in this class, the big thing that's been really exciting for me is that pirates are complex, right? And, 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 and there's something for everything in piracy. <laughs> Everyone could connect in some way. Um, so I, I like to think of it that way, is it, that really as I move forward into other areas, how can I be more interdisciplinary in my thinking? Because at first I came in just thinking this is about STEM and pirates. And, and I'm, 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 I thought I was pretty good at that, right? Because I, again, I'm on a Navy ship for a while. I sailed uh, for a couple of years at the Academy on an offshore racing team. So I understand sailboats. I understand all of that piece, um, but there was more to it. So I think that was the most exciting part for me is that something that started out simple that I thought I had a great, some boundaries around has turned into something more complex. But I also want to kind of use that, this idea to model this idea of lifelong learning. Um, and, and, and for me to be in the classroom being kind of uncomfortable, I don't know the history, I don't know the political science behind piracy, but just to be there saying, I don't know either, let's find it out. Let's, let's, let's find, let me show, point you guys in the research methods, how we could go to the library, different, use different ar archival sources to find out those questions that I don't know as your professor. So I've been pretty comfortable doing that in some of my capstone courses in chemistry. But that was really isolated in chemistry, right? This is, this is not isolated at all. So I, I think that's what I'll take forward to the next classes. Yeah, I, you know, it, it, just watching, you know, from the outside, it definitely seems that the the, the the play has opened up an appetite for inquiry, and and certainly the inquiry and the play are symmetrical. They both kind of ask you to juggle a lot of different things and look at it and you know see what you find. I, I, I'm interested if you take your kind of own, you know, you know, your own insights, how would you coach a faculty member from some other discipline who's like, gee, Keith, that's really brave of you to teach a pirate class. I don't think I could have any fun with my discipline. Well, I think to be fair, again, this is a, a, a seminar, so it's really not in chemistry. I, I've struggled because when people hear that I'm teaching piracy, it's usually, the first thing is, why are you teaching a class on piracy, number one? And the second comment is usually, oh, my daughter or my son's going to be a pirate for Halloween. And then it gets back to, why are you teaching pirates? For, um, so just to be fair to individual disciplines, I don't think it's necessarily a match um, with chemistry. Um, although explosives is right up my alley, too. So I think I can do cannons pretty well. Oh, well, there you go. But, but what I would just recommend is, Sometimes there's opportunities in different types of courses and these seminar courses that we're fortunate enough to have at the University of Denver provide that outlet for faculty if they want to be playful or creative to work across um, disciplinary boundaries. But I would argue that that that, that can occur across the, um, the academy in, in, in many different uh, perf uh, disciplines. Um, but I would say just start small. I think I just am kind of a mess because <laughs> I just jumped right in. Uh, but, and, and now I'm trying to rein it in, right? Because they're all having way too much fun. I told them on Thursday, yesterday, so you guys are having way too much fun now. I'm worried that you guys aren't making progress on your other part of your assignment. So I'm trying to, to guide them in that direction. I, I think we took the articles a little bit too, too, too seriously um, because I have to hone them in that direction. But I think there's room um, in, in every discipline to be playful. Yeah, it seems so. Um, so so I, I guess... A couple last questions I have, and I don't, I don't see any questions in the chat. If you have them, please chat or raise your hand. Um, the first thing, what's the most interesting thing you learned about pirates in the last, whatever, three, four months? By the way, if you're in the office, you get to hear pirate stuff all the time. It's great. I've learned yeah. a lot. Um, I don't, 
there's so many interesting things I learned about pirates. I think that one of the, well, for me, I think that the uh, United States has a has blinders on their own past. So that was one of the, the big interesting things that I have learned a lot about our history. Again, that Dorian maybe was taught and I just didn't get it the first time around. But in the, in the, in the early colonial era, um, with the Navigation Act, with England, all the all the goods were being had to be funneled through England to the United States, and so that was really starving the, the colonies. Um, and the amount of piracy that was occurring was amazing. I mean, ports like Boston were havens for pirates. Uh, neighbors, uh, it was just it was more more prevalent than I think that many of us were new when we were you know when we're taught American history, United States history. So I think that was pretty cool to me. There's just this whole historic um, part of, of, of our own country that I was totally unaware of. Um, and maybe that was just, again, blinders for me. I, I, maybe I fell asleep in American history. But I went back and checked my son's AP history book, and they don't talk anything about this. So I think that was the big thing for me. And also just, just history. History has been really the, the, the biggest exciting thing for me. The surprise is how much I didn't know about the impact of piracy uh, through really through the age of sail, if you will, up until you know the, the impact of piracy in the War of 1812, the Barbary pir pirates uh, and the formation of the, the reformation of the United States Navy. So all this historic context that I should have known um, has really been a, a great surprise to me. Okay, so now Laura has a question for you. We'll backtrack just a, just a minute here and then I'll, I'll ask you a wrap up question. She wants to know how you would differentiate interdisciplinary project-based learning outcomes from adding in the pirate play element. I mean, is this a layer cake or is this a stew, you know? Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I think it has to, uh, that's a great question. I don't know how I, how I could differentiate them because um, when you're so interdisciplinary, I think, because really this, the topic is uh, the main learning objective is for them to be able to access resources, take something and apply their knowledge. And so from my standpoint, er, any, everything could be interdisciplinary. Uh, so they could be, granted there's, I could have some learning outcomes that, that, that are gonna be tied to this project where they're trying to connect an activity to a next generation science standard. Um, but then I'm not assessing them individually because I think I'm just as now I've, I've grown throughout the, the inception of the course and actually the implementation of it. I also want to see how they're looking at their own interest um, and looking at the primary literature sources or secondary literature sources, how they can pull that together, synthesize that, and then present that information. So from an interdisciplinary standpoint, I think that that's kind of universal, those, those skills. And I hope I answered that question. I think you know it's, it's complicated. We're making you go faster. Go ahead. There was a couple of questions in the chat. One, Keith, would you be willing to share your syllabus with people? I would. It's Do pretty. It's good? pretty bare bones. Okay. And then the other question is, um, I know we're kind of running out of time, but do you have a brief description of what um, class time looks like? So class time front ended, I, I can talk. So I, I front loaded with play at the very beginning um, so that they could then play and then begin to design. So the whole idea of, of playing a little bit then come back and design what your projects are gonna be. Um, and so that was front loaded play, play time, if you will. But then the second half of the quarter is as they picked up their own special projects, it's really gonna be short presentations. So we're gonna get some of that in-depth knowledge of how they can synthesize their information and then, and then talk to their, present to their classmates um, on some of their, their own individual areas of interest in piracy. So my, my, I, can, I can try to sketch it out and, I'll, and I can do that and send it to, to you and David. But I think it, it's at the very beginning of the quarter, it's more playful. And then as it goes throughout the end of the quarter, it's more intentional around developing the product, whether it's an activity or uh, the big boat or their own presentation. 
Great, great. So I have to ask you one last question. And, uh, you know, and, and again, thank you, uh, because I, I'd like to say, if an analytical chemist can play, you can too. I think that's the message I wanted to get across here. No, no offense to my friends in, in the hard sciences. Um, so here's the question, Keith, why do pirates wear eye patches? Uh, well, I don't know. Um, that's a fallacy, right? They're, they're, I mean, pirates, if pirates wore eye patches, then all the sailors of the time would have worn eye patches too. And so some of the, the, the rumors on the internet is that they did it so that they could be above deck and then go below deck or something like that. But that, but if you do that, you lose all your depth perception. So I would say pirates, if, if pirates were doing it, so should have the merchant men and the naval sailors at the same time, right? Um, so I don't really, I think we can debunk that pretty much. And one of the science experiments we could do is, is actually with rods and cones, with students going in and out of dark rooms. But yeah. I didn't do that. I could, share, I could share a picture as we leave if you want. Yeah, but uh, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure if folks can see that. Yeah, yeah. But this is one of their, one of their voyages. And so their voyage, they were sailing around. And this is wind driven. Um, and so we have water bodies. That was one. And they, there's pennies is their ballast. And this actually, this, this little pirate ship had a rudder in it. And so they were under, they wanted to be really complicated, but they didn't really predict what would happen with the rudder. Um, but that's really important um, from, a, from a nautical standpoint. So that's one example. And here's another little one that was, again, a lighter sail. And this one was just trucking down, going pretty fast when our, uh, just to a different size of sale, different material of sale. So they're just playing. Well, yeah, never just playing, but that's awesome. Well, thanks so much. Um, you can hang around if you want. We're, we're going to actually, I'm going to do a, a kind of a, a little activity here. And um, again, I we can do this in breakout rooms, but, um, and, and this is right up your alley, Keith. I, I, I think that there's something magical in, the idea of taking what you want to teach and finding this almost kind of like just passion connection, like, you know, a pirate sound fun and interesting and unpacking that for yourself and with the students. So I wanted to challenge the, uh, the, 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 the group here to just answer this question, right? And I called this activity pirates, princesses, monsters, and Bigfoot, because I, I think any kind of like just interesting pop culture kind of a uh, uh, character could be used to um, help, you know, think about a, 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 a different approach to teaching. So um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to hit you with this first Keith, but I want other people to think about this, like to think about what you teach and what, how you could use this. How could you teach your course next year through a, a, one of these other lenses, princesses, monsters, or Bigfoot? What comes to mind? You want By the way, he's unprepared for this. This is totally a surprise. Do you want me to do this one? Yeah, I just, I'm just like off the top of your head. Like, I'm like, hey, Keith, you got to teach your freshman yeah. seminar next year. So I could totally do Bigfoot. Um, I'm, I'm all about it. So, I, and so I, I would just use Bigfoot. I would do uh, mystical creatures of the forest. Um, it'd have to be a, a Yeti too, or mystical creatures of the mountains. Um, and that would be my theme. Uh, so talk about different uh, mountain habitats. I don't know, but I could do some fun things around uh, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti pretty easily. All right. I'll take your environmental ecology course based on Bigfoot. That's right. I'm curious. Somebody else. So somebody turn on your camera. I want, I want you to come on stage and I want you to just give it a shot. I teach a course about blank using the theme of pick one of these and tell me how it works. I know it's late in the day. You're tired. I'll go. Okay. Okay. So I teach a course about counseling mental health and I'll use the theme of Bigfoot. Some fun things I can tell you is we would use Bigfoot as our client and talk about how he has identity issues because nobody believes he exists. Something around that, apply theory in that fun way. Anyone else? I mean, there's okay. been a bunch of conversation about zombies. I think that that's that's epic. Um, I teach a course about math using the theme of monsters, and we can really dive into 
math trauma and the terrifying experiences that we all grew up with the quadratic formula and fractions. I think you should do a math class about uh, about um, multiples like zombies and vampires, just how long it will take before everyone's is either a zombie or a vampire. Yeah, I think let's have a whole class maybe. I teach about architecture and I could easily teach a class about monsters <laughs> and we would actually explore all these different monster types as um, as as uh, environmental conditions. And then the student's final project would be to have to build a, you know, a vampire proof house, a zombie proof house, a creature from the black lagoon proof vacation home, make people actually start to think through their environmental conditions. And by the way, I didn't think of that in advance. I was just looking at this going, well, I can do this. I, um, I teach a course about typography. This is Andrew, by the way. And um, I give my students a choice between two themes at the beginning of the class, and no class has yet choos chosen the theme, even though it's my favorite. But it's the theme of investigators. So they would, throughout the semester, investigate type crimes and figure out who the culprit is and how to solve it. Uh, none of my students have picked it yet, to my, much to my chagrin. But you think they haven't picked it? Uh, the other option is a Dungeons and Dragons theme, and every every semester, all my students are like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna do that one." We're gonna do D and D. <laughs> Someone else. I just I think um, that my, my joy in this, of course, is putting people on the spot. I mean, I have something about that I just delight in. But um, I think that this is also a wonderful evidence of the fact that once you give yourself the no consequence thought experiment. Of teaching through one of these trivial lenses, I think it kind of maybe unlocks some creativity. Julia, please go. This actually wasn't my class, it's one of my colleagues' classes, and he ran this last fall. It was pretty amazing. Um, he did a course, um, it was a, an interdisciplinary course in the Honors College using the theme, and his what he actually called the course was how to build a starship. And that's what students did. They they looked at all sorts of humanitarian issues. And uh, I actually, I did a guest lecture for him on linguistics and the importance of language and how we use it in things. Um, but they talked about art. They talked about the science of doing things. They talked about civics. They played basically D and D games. They built, ultimately their final project was that they had to put together a plan for a starship if, if humans had to leave earth and who would get to go how do you decide who gets to go um what gets taken you know what cultural artifacts do you take with you all of those kinds of things so it was it was really pretty amazing that he was able to do that in a semester <laughs> yeah what was the the discipline or the course um it was interdisciplinary okay. um and it was an honors course so i'm not sure exactly you know what the what the Gotcha. It was housed in honors, but it was uh, it was an interdisciplinary course, and so he had students from all sorts of different um, fields. I think it was like a sciences across the curriculum type course. Okay. That's awesome. Neat. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So the, the interdisciplinary freshman seminar these kind of more open and the courses are really ripe for play, but I think you do it anywhere. I, and Natasha, you're, you get your hand up. Yeah, I was just thinking that um, one of the courses I teach, so I teach a course about community health and uh, using a theme of princesses. Uh, I was thinking that the students could be princesses or princes and they can select the community, which would be their kingdom. And they develop a project to address a particular health issue in their kingdom. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, why not? I mean, like get some 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 fictional writing going i think sometimes that that, that decouples the the charge of doing real things like you know you're trying to solve real people's problems you're trying to solve fantasy problems and people are like much more willing to lean into it because it feels less like they'll make a mistake of consequence i love that um angela yeah so i was just thinking i regularly teach a criminological theory class which is why people do bad things. And I was thinking I could apply that to various villains like DC or Marvel villains and even anti-heroes like Venom who is technically a villain but could also be a hero and have them use theories to explain why these different villains acted in different ways. You could oh. use villainous. There's like three different versions of the board game villainous. Yeah, there's a board game, yeah. 
Writing that down. That's a great idea. Thank you. Um, so uh, other people want to try this. I mean, you know, just, just to go for it. Well, I know you're doing it privately in your own mind in case you get called on, but I, I think these are the kinds of activities that, I mean, A, they can actually begin the beginnings of a design process for a course. Uh, you know, I had the privilege of getting to watch Keith design his course, and it was just interesting how it went from a very small idea into a, I think a very co complex and elaborate, you know, motivation for inquiry. I, I, I learned a lot about about pirates and and you know and even thinking through some of the political dimensions and having these conversations about some of the science of piracy, things like eye patches and and, and watching, you know, the, the students develop boats. Watching Keith coming into the office carrying massive arms of cardboard, which are the prototypes for the boat that eventually I will hopefully float you across the swimming pool. That's the video that we want. Or actually, I think the whole office wants to come out and cheer for that. Um, but it's it's this is this is play, right? P play is kind of unfolding and self. It's it's got its own feedback. It it, it grows itself. Um, does anybody else have any any thoughts or ideas about the whole idea of? And, and again, I don't want to reduce Keith's course to just being like, oh, it's just pirates plus. But I think that the natural progression is to kind of follow that play instinct and follow the discovery and, and, and play, move things around, try things, look at different configurations. And, and this exercise that I've got on the screen here really is the most trivial form of this, but it's just a starter. It's a conversation starter. Um, Alexander has something here. Did you wanna pop on the video and talk about this? Oh, and Andrea, you've got one too. Do either one of you wanna hop on and just talk, talk real quick through to everybody? Yeah, I was just kind of drawn to this notion of um, like uh, having students role play, um, like apply practical knowledge in uh, like an imaginary situation. And um, it just made a lot more sense to do a practice, uh, do an imaginary role play for an imagined situation. It just allowed, um, you know, in my experience, when I was teaching English in Japan, just allowed my, um, my uh, students to focus entirely on what they wanted to practice instead of all the kind of messy practical realities of the situation. So it, it gave them great <laughs> fantasy in, in a way allowed them greater focus. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and Katie's got an offer here, the horror scholar offering to be your external consultant on your next monster themed course. I, I teach a course, I teach teachers who are getting their masters in reading. And I love the idea of taking the kingdom princess princess, since it's part of now the common core standards and um, looking at it from the perspective of you're teaching the royalties offspring versus you're teaching a peasant and just look at the whole social <laughs> economics of educational access through that lens. I love it. Well, I want to, um, Keith, I, I tacked an exercise on the end of your, your talk, but um, I just want to say thank you. Of course, I have to say thank you. He is still my boss. I, I'll pay for this on Monday, you know, but um. I, I think it's great. And, and I realize that every one of us has encounters with faculty that maybe don't think of themselves as in this play evolution, but really are doing the work. They're playing, they're having fun, their students are playing and learning. And, and I just uh, thank you so much, Keith, for just coming and letting me grill you on what you've done. It's, it was a, it was a, it's, it's been fun to watch for me. Well, thank you for having me. I'll let everyone know how it goes out. Uh, well, I'm not sure if I if I don't make it across the pool, at least I can swim, right? So. <laughs>